today's presentation will be a, a little bit hands-on. So we're actually going to uh, going to have you uh, get on the computers. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time, but just enough for, for you guys to, to have a little bit of uh, uh, or say creative play time um, to hopefully take a look at some of the curriculum that you have in your areas and to be able to fit it into the new IT model curriculum that um, has been uh, at this point in time publicized through the descriptors and will hopefully knock on wood actually get formal blessing uh, by the Academic Senate um, here uh, over the next couple of months. It's always hard when you try to build a new discipline, you try to create something new, uh, working within the existing structures, and that's, that's what, we, what we've been doing. So I'm going to try to give you, give you some tools first, and then um, we're also going to have uh, Nancy speak about uh, some of the examples that she's been able to use um, as we get to the, to the end point, and then Richard's going to help along the way as well. Um, let me first uh, kind of guide you through what we're going to do. Uh, part of it is taking an inventory of what you currently have at your colleges and how you might be able to integrate that model curriculum with what you currently have. Because while to an extent we are creating a new wheel with IT in between information systems, MIS, and computer science, there's no need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to what you guys have. Because let me ask, who in here has a Cisco program at their college? Okay, Microsoft, IT Academy, several of you as well. Okay, um, no need to throw those babies out with any kind of bathwater because uh, they fit in with this with this curriculum um, right here. Um, anybody have a, a database focus? Anybody have a database certificate? Some of you do as well. Okay, security coming up for for anybody? Slowly but surely. Okay, all right, good. Um, trust me, it fits with every single one of these because even if you look in security, you know you can't start from uh, somebody who just you know turned on the computer for the first time. There have to be some certain basic skills that people have to walk in with. Guess what? Here are some of your basic skills through the model curriculum. Um, even though it's, it's, it was supposed to have been a transfer model curriculum, if you heard from part one, you heard that. Um, we haven't been able to get it there yet, primarily for the reason that many most of the CSUs do not currently offer baccalaureate uh, components that would basically sit on top of this model curriculum. So by building the model curriculum and the folks who did this were through the CID process, the faculty discipline review group for information systems, um, three community college faculty and three CSU faculty, and actually Richard uh, and I were part of that at DRG. So he said, well, um, we have to give something to CSUs who may be interested in this. So uh, the grand compromise was, okay, here's a foundational model curriculum that we would love and hopefully within the next several years will turn into a transfer model curriculum um, once more of our CSU colleagues are able to build the upper division components. It's not easy, right? Because we've got the engineering side, we've got the business side, we've got the computer science and engineering, we've got MIS and business. Uh, building a, a new discipline in this regard is, is, is an interesting task. Um, and obviously, we're not the only people who are doing this. It's happening in, in other places in the country. Um, but getting it integrated into an existing system has, has been, for now, a challenge in the long run. Well, hopefully, uh, be accomplished here uh, by the FDRG uh, in the not too distant future. Um, then we're actually going to talk about uh, the idea of a descriptor uh, versus a syllabus. And I recently was at a faculty meeting where it was pointed out that some people had just taken a descriptor and submitted that to the curriculum committee uh, with you know minor additions locally and and and, and got that through. Um, and we're we're hoping that you'll. Uh, follow a, a better practice than that um, to make things happen. Uh, I'm trying to be as nice as possible about it uh, and, and to make that happen at your college. So that's the plan for that's the plan for today. So here's the model curriculum. Okay. Um, and what you're seeing here are four core courses. And I know there's, there's, there's five listed, but there's an or between those two. So the first one is an A plus course. And you might think, huh, A plus, CSU, isn't it a bit too pedestrian? And we asked the question, and actually the CSU folks on the FDS, said, no, 
that, that would work for us. Uh, it addresses many of the skills, and actually, it's in the same in the audience here. Uh, at one of our meetings, uh, James from MPEG was, was able to contribute very, very directly and said, well, you know, but this, this course very much addresses what's in the Department of Labor model, uh, very much addresses what's in the ACM uh, two year curriculum model. Um, so, with, with all, you know, I, I was hesitant to present it to the CSU folks. They said, no, no, this, 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 this will work. So, I'll, I'll give a little bit of credit there, what credit is doing as well there, James. Um, A plus. The second course, and this actually, this descriptor has been uh, finalized for about a year and a half now. So this is the uh, traditional survey course for information systems that the business majors would typically take. Um, ITIS 120, so this is the software, hardware, networks, security, ethics. Um, it's not an applications course. It does do some hands-on. Uh, work as required by, by the CSUs, and that makes sense. But this is not the business apps course, right? This is not the uh, Word Excel PowerPoint access. That it's, it's more than that. Okay, so that's the 120. Then uh, the FDIT felt it important to have a programming course, and that's what we were told by industry as well. And if you heard it again this morning as part of the, the keynotes. Um, yeah, there needs to be some programming. But notice, if somebody starts computer science and decides, ah, maybe I don't want to quite go through all the math or all the physics or something else happens. I, maybe I actually found out there is a way to learn about computers besides traditional computer science. So we'll take that course. We don't make them start from scratch. We want them to have some programming. So we also came up with an ITIS specific descriptor for a programming course that's more business oriented. It's, uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's not quite as uh, CS beefy as the uh, COP 112, but it will do the job for, uh, for the programming course. And the last but not least, this is your N plus course, your network plus course. And if you take a look at the model curriculum right there, you've got two opportunities for certification. A plus and N plus, network plus. Both of those are listed right here. Yes, sir. Yeah, one of the issues we have for that is the file curriculum is not programming classes, I think we're in the process of teaching units, lectures, students, and we have a four unit class. How do you pick that into a three unit class? Yeah, um, we do understand that some, uh, actually quite a few colleges have, have higher unit programming courses. Um, what we have done at the Summers Java College um, is the um, class that was required for the MIS degree in the lower division, um, programming class with we teach it in BB, um, that is a three unit class. So we do have that class for the for the local business side that meets that need. Uh, that is an all lecture course. So, so what we did to get down to that to stay within the six hours of instruction, we did two hours of lecture, four hours of that. That's a three unit class. Same amount of instruction and realistically, probably more accurate to what you really do. I mean, you don't really lecture for three straight hours in a class, but uh, you typically have some hands on. That's the last one. So, two hours lecture, four hours lab is the same number of instructional hours, right? Still six hours, but in terms of units, it's just three years class. Students like that because they pay, you know, 25% less for the course, too, right? Please. Um, the ITIS 120, can it be, you're saying network level, can it be CPMA course? Answer is absolutely yes. So we're going to go that direction. That's what's nice about the descriptors, right? Descriptors actually have a great degree of flexibility as long as your course covers what's in those descriptors. You can make it fit, absolutely. This was specifically designed so that Cisco could fit into this. So we're very much aware of, and again, we're hoping to integrate the existing programs that you guys have, very much so, absolutely. Now, we've got two electives that are there that will allow you to customize um, what your curriculum would look like locally. And um, you know, it gives us some flexibility. We'll get there in just a second. A plus, first course, high schools. It was very important for us 
again, after we listen to the input, and let's say we, I'm in the FDRG, uh, input from folks to also help create a pathway. And A plus is a popular course that's taught at high schools. So if somebody has those skills already coming in, there's no reason for them to retake it when they come to us. In fact, there is a good starting point for them to jump right into the IT model curriculum right there. So it's a way for us to attract students, and it's a way for students who may be interested in that area to get them started right away. Second course, again, is that uh, survey course. Um, Business 140 is cross-listed within the CIV uh, patterns with this course. So yes, it is rather, I'm going to say business focused. Um, a lot of people who teach it, teach it with a, a business uh, uh, focus. However, this is one of those classes that exposes students to the various different areas and that will probably do a lot of work for you when it comes to counseling students into where those electives right here should be and as to what they should be taking. Because from this, they can then identify areas with which they may or may not be familiar and say, hey, I really like this. This is kind of cool. I never thought about digital media as being part of this. Or uh, maybe this, you know, this, the security piece is kind of interesting. Um, so that's where the second course comes in. Again, the third course, some kind of programming course. That's what we heard. Okay. They need to be able to code. And if nothing else, uh, I've heard the question of, how about scripting course? And if you look at the descriptor specifically for ITIS 130, you can definitely wrap a scripting course around that. So it doesn't have to be a traditional C++, VB, Java course. Okay. You could do it with Python. You could do it with PHP. You've got all kinds of different options. Yes, again, if you've taken the computer from computer science side and if you decide, hey, there's a way for me to move across, absolutely, we'll take that as well. The answer to your question, okay? So this is very much uh, designed so that folks who have Cisco academies can uh, use the, what I'm going to call the N plus course, but that's the script or the ITIS 150, as a path into the model curriculum so that you can use the model curriculum once again as a foundation for your Cisco folks and then build into whichever direction you would like to. Um, notice there are also two electives right there. I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. But yes, very, very much so. Again, already two opportunities for industry certification, which you heard about this morning as well, are very important because that is what gives this additional credibility. So what do we do with those electives? And as you already heard, we all have different programs, which makes it nice because we can kind of build whatever we want. And we're really not taking that away because there's that piece is still there. On the other hand, industry is saying, can't you give us something that we can understand? And I would hate for it to be only certifications, even though that's a great start. But um, as Steve said earlier, you know, we need to be able to communicate to industry that there's value in that associate's degree. And that's a sales job that, that we have to do to an extent. Uh, we can do that through advisory committees, but whichever, whichever channels we, we can. Um, that said, we're still aiming for that bachelor's degree in the long run because that's where everybody wants to go as well. So um, you know, but we're always thinking combination. And again, your CSUs with which you're working you know, has, has certain uh, full side in, in their operative vision. Um, and you know, we want to give them some flexibility there as well. So um, here's your, your electives. Let's talk about those in some more detail. I've got some proposals for you um, when it comes to electives. First of all, here's the list. Um, and that's uh, rather than this will this immediately to the next slide please, so we can talk about them in detail. Into the systems analysis and design. Now some of you may go, whoa, that's an upper division thing at my CSU. I don't really want to touch that. Okay. Then don't include it in your model curriculum. Don't make it one of your electives. Okay. It was a desire for some of the folks we talked to to have a course like this um, so that students would see the entire SDLC. Um, they could say, hey, what does an IT project go through from beginning to end? This is a good course that might do that. Equip them with some tools uh, for documenting and then that. The next one is close to your heart since you mentioned Cisco. So this is the second Cisco Academy course. This is the routing and switching course. Uh, and only it's uh, CNET 155B. 
and we're actually going to take a look at some of the civil eye more specific um, in a little while. But um, it requires the first, again, let's go through the first Cisco course, well, this is the net plus, network plus course, but not for not tying it to Cisco, but certainly Cisco is one of the possibilities of including that link. Yes? Of course, the nominal amount of information. In fact, it is crazy to put it as a five credit course. You know, what is the nature of the team that has gone out of the system? Same thing with manipulating the lecture and lab. You know, lab is not equal to lecture, right? In there, the way the, the, the units are assigned. So, one hour of lecture is equivalent to three hours of lab. I don't know who developed that ratio, but that's what it is. And it's a good thing because we can manipulate those. And we made our CCNA 2 class a three unit class with two hours of lecture, four hours of lab. So uh, we meet uh, for three hours a week. Uh, the other time is done, you know, uh, by arrangement, the other lab time. But uh, we meet for, and we lecture, or I lecture for just two hours or an hour and a half, and then they do the hands on activities during that time to meet as well. Is this for your actual Cisco uh, group classes as well? I mean, you have to take lab. Yeah, for both CCNA 1 and CCNA 2. Those are the two courses, if you're familiar with Cisco, that have the bulk of the content. And, uh, so this will be the CCNA 2 course right here. Next, this is uh, the server class course. Once again, potential certification. So this is a non vendor specific operating systems course. For servers, you could teach this in Linux. You could teach this on the Microsoft side. Um, I don't think anybody's still teaching Nobel, but then I'm also surprised every once in a while. Anybody <laughs> still? Or, okay, good. All right. Um, but, you know, again, a, a, a potential for, for certification if you teach it, the, teach it the right way, going towards CompTIA uh, certification. And again, if you are running a Microsoft IT Academy, this may be one way to, to include that within your uh, structure of, of your existing curriculum. Introduction to security. Now, I've, I've, I've seen Nancy sitting here in the corner and like, yeah, just, you're going to do that with one course, Marcus, right? No, of course, of course we're not. Um, but we all know that security is becoming increasingly important. Uh, in fact, I'm, uh, after hearing that, uh, is it Coastline that, that actually got the CIE2Y certification? Um, but I have to say that one of my colleagues at the Summer Shiva College and kind of sabbatical for this upcoming semester to hopefully do the same with our curriculum as well. Um, we all know security is a big deal. How many people really know about that? The way for them after a good foundation from the model curriculum for students to take a peek at what's there. And then you can build this into your CAE to Y uh, security certification there as well. If that's where your college will be to go. Um, this one was an interesting one. And notice some of these descriptors are still in draft, which means you're going to have an opportunity to help vet these courses. I'll talk about that at the end of the, of the presentation. Um, and this one is the course that many of us know as ethical hacking. And the CSU folks said, don't give us a course that's called ethical hacking. And they didn't like the name. Um, so it ended up being an introduction to information assurance, also known as ethical hacking. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, Many of us kind of have, have uh, started teaching this course for the fun of it, and it's become kind of important. Just how do you, you know, how do you know where to where to look for issues if you if you don't know how to potentially cause some damage? Of course, with the white hat on yourself. Um, so that's that's the course, and uh, once again, you know, notice more important security. Same as forensics, okay, and it's fundamentals, okay, introductory courses. Um, uh, this one's still in draft mode as well, so uh, the script preventing should be starting here any, any day. Um, and notice it had a prerequisite of the introduction to the uh, security course as well, just like the, actually the ethical hacking one did not have an advisor. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, the database management course. Now again, if, uh, if somebody went to an MIS degree, there was a lot of database on the upper division. Um, but if, if students aren't going to go there, they're not going to specifically get the synthesizer to go to MIS, right? This is an IT piece. So here is the foundation for the information society uh, in a uh, three unit um, database course. Ideally, we want students to have a little bit of background as a whole, but it's an advisory. Notice that there's a relatively shallow prerequisite structure in this model of curriculum as well. 
And at the very, very last, on the uh, elective side, the business course? What do you mean business course? Who in here has never heard that our students cannot read and write well? Thank you. So, for all those reasons, um, that's what the, the BizCom course is in. If that is applicable to you in your area and very important, found to be very important by your business, by advisory committee, um, this is one for you to include there as well. Yes, please. We talked about that. We actually had we had a discussion about the technical writing piece, um, and uh, folks thought that that was. Um, for, for all good or bad reasons, um, probably not quite appropriate for something like this, but it would be more so on the communications piece rather than on the, on the IT piece. So it was discussed. Um, uh, so, in fact, it was brought up at, at my college as an experimental offering. I, I brought it to the FDRGs and they should be looking at this. Like, yeah, maybe not. So it was considered, but we decided against it for, for, that, for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, here are some examples. If you currently have a Microsoft program, these might be your two electives. Okay. Uh, big into security, uh, certainly covered many different areas for the Microsoft, in addition to the model curriculum. If you currently have, thank you, a Cisco Academy program, here are those two courses, the CCNA1 and CCNA2, following the baseball curriculum. If you currently are looking at security, you may even give students some options within security as to which way they will want to come. I have a feeling because it's such with all the different thematic areas too uh, within CC, CIA 2 y that you'd rather have substantially more than three. Uh, it's going to have to have more units more likely, but here are, here are your options. Whoever said that those two electives within your degree program would have to be fixed. Why not build options into those electives as well? If you are looking at big data, okay, if that's one of the industry needs that you need to fill with companies in your area, well, here's your database course. And maybe your systems analysis and design if you're working with larger companies to be able to handle larger IT projects. Otherwise, if it's smaller companies, it's your server course to be able to also efficiently manage those databases. If you are looking at the traditional MIS side. Am I suggesting in any way possible that business schools might consider adopting this as a foundation for their MIS degrees? Yes, I am. Are they going to do anything with that? Maybe, maybe not. This certainly wouldn't hurt. Okay. So again, Options for where do we take this to the next level? Because I know that business, you know, have, the, the business degree certainly in my eyes has evolved since I went to it 20 some years ago. They now do have networking courses, so they've had it for some time. Now. But you know, so there's there's a different room for change. And the important certification pieces. Okay, if you want to focus at hey, we need to make sure our, our students you know, are prepared for as many certifications as possible. And I, I just put the Comtia ones out there, there are certainly other ones out there as well. A plus, network plus, server plus, getting started on security plus. Wow. If I have somebody with two years, maybe a little bit more of, of education, and they've got four Comtia certifications under their belt, I've got a product I can market to my employers. I've got stuff right there. It's just, okay. And by the way, this also has a source system to be attached to it. Now we've got some value there as well. What better way than for us to, to get around, to, to get across to the employers what we actually do. So here's where we have you guys do a little bit of work. Um, I want you all to open the browser, please. And actually, I'm going to escape out of this. And in your browser, I want you to search for my name. And I tried to find a more efficient way to do this, and I blew up my own website in the process. But here. my name is Marcus, M-A-R-K-U-S, Geisler, G-E-I-S-S-L-E-R. G-E-I-S-S-L-E-R. 
and I wish there you go. we can use technology. Okay, can you guys read this? Okay, hang on. Like that. Okay, so when you search for that, and I paid Google lots of money for this. Um, no, I didn't. But if you know how to manipulate search engines, then it makes it easier. Um, if you go to Marcus Geisler's homepage at Cosumnes River College, that should be the first link. And then click on, up all the way on the top, is a link called Course Central. Course Central, right here. And yes, this website looks terrible because I blew it up this morning and trying to put this link up here with my tablet. Um, but it says NPIC 2015 Winter Conference Entities, click here. Do that, please. And that should get you to this page. Do I have everybody there? Okay, all right. Let me you're, just, you're supposed to raise your hand when you're stuck. Come on, don't you know this? All right. So I'm going to back up briefly. So do a search for my name, Marcus Geisler, just like this. Okay. Do a Google search. Then when you get to that Google search, click on the first link which says Marcus Geisler's homepage because I'm not sure college. And then once you get to my homepage, click on Course Central on top, Course Central. And then right here is a link that says MPIC 2015 Window Conference Attendees. Click here. Do I have everybody, everybody with me? If not, raise your hand, please, so Richard can help you. All right, cool. All right. So the first thing I want you to click on is the first link that says ITMC Implementation Planning. That's a PowerPoint slide, a PowerPoint presentation. Go ahead and open it, please. And that, what that gives you is a lot of the presentation that you have seen today. And by the way, I'm going to leave this up. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So if you guys want to get access to this resource from, uh, from home, you can do that. Otherwise, before we leave today, if you want to upload it to your Google Drive, that may be another way for you to get your hands on the presentation as quickly as possible. Then I want you to go down to slide number eight. Now on slide number eight, you'll find over on the left hand side next to the slide the elective courses that are right there. And what I want you to do is I want you to see if one of those courses matches one of the courses that you have at your campus. And I want you to replace the title with what you have or the course number and on your campus. Okay? So for example, we have Introduction to Information System Security at Customer Server College. That happens to be CISS 300. Okay? And if I want for my campus to fit that, I'm going to pick that up and drag that in as one of my electives. So pick a course that you think matches one of these. Change the name, drag it across. Then keeping in mind what that might be, what should be the next one? Well, since I'm going down the security road, we also have a, we have the ethical hacking course, but I don't remember the course number to be very honest. Um, but we have a forensics course, okay? And that for us is CISS. 365, pick it up, pull it across. So now I've got, that's a good question, how many units? Well, the model curriculum is 13. Add to a three hundred electives, that's 19. GE, 39, is that what I heard? Yes. Okay. And if you could get any of your courses in your core, that's math, it's just glad. So I'm lonely, for example, our 101, our computer, the T course, is social science kind of 
long story. We haven't told anybody about that. Well, you still talk computers in society. So they get doubled in because of that. So that allows us to get another IT course. Well, actually, for, for the model curriculum, any class after Algebra 2. So we'll take statistics for the model curriculum, calculus, um, finite, where the where school might exist, um, trade, um, and there was one more. There's a total of, total, of, total of five. So basically, most any course after. Yeah. The number that we were helped to for as part of the CIS CID process was no more than 21. No more than 21. Yeah, this is for the major. So for the 19, we're, we're under that. Um, one of the other things that the FDRG is going to try to do is to make, and actually a lot of it has to be done at the local campuses, is to take the ITIS 120, which is that survey course. If anything qualifies as a life skill these days, it's a good foundation in information technology. So we're hoping to be able to get it into that uh, area E. Okay. That's not there, so I'm not making any promises. But that's one of the things that we're going to try to push because it makes more and more sense. But, you know, these, these are skills that are out of that class that students can, can use right away. Okay, very, very quickly. So, uh, but yeah, so we are definitely limited by a very high amount of teaching, no doubt about it. On the other hand, your associate's degrees technically aren't limited to 60 units, right? For transfer purposes, if it's going to be a TMC, there's the 60. So if you had to go over, you could. Whether you would want to is a whole different question. I would strongly suggest you not, because it makes it more difficult for students to achieve it. This is not just the California thing. This is happening all over the nation. Like a lot of different years. Most degrees at technical schools across the nation are 70 units. And some of them do more than that. They really want, you know, the taxpayers they don't want to pay yeah. for 70 units. They want to, you know, why can't they get that to 60 units? But, but you're right. There are the brand. There aren't a whole lot of choices. A whole lot of, a whole lot of, you can't like step left and step right and then come back to the middle. If, as soon as you do, you, you hit that 60 units really quickly. Yeah. Um, so, opportunity for, for one. Okay. And the reason I'm making this available to you guys is, hey, you know, send, send this to your folks in the departments, uh, the different the folks who, who teach the different courses. How would you implement this? Um, and what you may decide is in, at your college is take one of these out. You know, if you say, well, in our degree, we only want to be able to meet that descriptor. I would hate for you to do that because I want somebody who comes from another college who's taken this class to still be able to make it through without any problems. That's the point of CID. But you have that flexibility at your college as well if, if, if there's no other way to get it through curriculum for yourself. Okay. So I've given you a couple extra pieces of wiggle room, but here's a way to relatively quickly present this to, to your colleagues and you can, hey, how can this be done on our campus? And probably relatively easily. Now let me move on to the piece that does the syllabi. And if you go back to the browser, let's take a look at the CID website first. Who's been to the CID website before? Okay, so about three quarters. Okay, not bad. Okay, good. Because um, it's, a, it's a good place um, for us, especially now that the uh, descriptors are finalized. So if you I put you directly onto the descriptors page. You can scroll down and click on view final descriptors. And then if you go to the bottom of that slide or of that page and click on the selector, select information and in, information technology and information systems is your ITIS. And then down below that pops up or pop up the current descriptors that have been approved. Okay. So it's IT, IS 110, and so on. Everything that's right here. Notice we don't have the new ones that are still in draft mode. You're going to uh, you're going to start seeing those. Okay, but here they are. I want you to select ITIS 120, and it gives you the course content right here. 
But more importantly, what a lot of people miss, notice there's a link to download that syllabus in Word. Go ahead. Okay, so if you click on download in Word, and go ahead and say open. Here is now the descriptor. And click on view for me, please. And then click on edit document. If you edit document, it might make it a little bit more cleanly readable. So here you have the descriptor. Notice it doesn't say on here syllabus. It doesn't say course outline. It's a descriptor, which means it is a foundation of what needs to be included. Now, I also happen to be the chair of the uh, core group of faculty who review course outlines that are submitted against these descriptors. Thank you, Nancy. And so we have some interesting questions every once in a while. So what if somebody, like American River College did, like your colleagues did, they said, well, we're going to submit you a course that has all of this, but we also really like programming, so we're going to put a programming component into that on top of it. Did that go through? The answer is yes, it did. Everything was covered. They thought it was really important to include programming. Remember the discussions that we had about whether or not to include programming? It was against my better judgment that we did not include it, but majority rule, I can live with that. At CRC, we, did, we took it just as was. But at American River College, they really wanted programming. Guess what? They included everything else. Their course outline went just fine. So there's some ability for flexibility here. Take advantage of it. Now, if you guys go too crazy, we do owe industry a standard, quote unquote. Okay, we need to make sure everything's covered. Yes, that's here. But there's a little bit of a wiggle room. Take advantage of it as you can. How does that look like? Go ahead. Uh, at Cassandra River College, let's go back to the browser. Actually, you can just back up, I guess, right? Yes, just back up. I think we send the Explorer. Yeah. And descriptor. I see a new website. Okay. And then back up from there until we get back to the page where I had a start. There we go. Okay. Now click on sample course outline one. This happens to be the course outline at the Summers River College that is basically identical to the descriptor. Go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Okay. But notice, we threw in an advisory. Okay. It's been there for a while. We decided not to take it out. Why not? We want people to be able to type before they take the class. Um, the description is very similar to the descriptor. It doesn't have to be identical. And as you scroll further down, of course, you see the other standard parts. Um, they, our, our curriculum committee, wanted this to be different than what the standard descriptor says. And by the way, if you notice, the descriptor doesn't have SLOs on it. It's a political thing. They didn't want to call it SLOs. Okay? That's, that's why they're on there. We, in our district, insist on SLOs. I have a funny feeling these days most everybody does anyway. Okay? But these are different from what's in the descriptor. Of course, the subject matter matches, but different format and then that. Okay. So, but there's a whole lot more thought that's in this. And this is where I, also as, as the chair of the, of the co-reviewers, appeal to you as faculty members, have some pride and don't just copy and paste stuff. Make it work for your population. Make it work for your industry, for your programs, and first and foremost, for your students. Don't just copy and paste. We're better than that. Okay. So make it, make it more than the descriptor is. You have the flexibility? Do it. Let's go ahead and back out of this. And click on sample course outline two. You have heard the term Ohlone College a few times already today when it comes to uh, the IT degree. And this is really the first actual incarnation of the model curriculum. And Richard's done a lot of work, uh, sometimes with, with, from what I understand, maybe a couple of fights that he had to fight internally within his institution to be able to get it through. Um, but here is a uh, course outline for a course called CNET 155A. 
I want to ask prizes. Quiz question. What's the ITIS designator number for it? Okay. Get, her, get, her, get, 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 get started learning with those. It happens to be ITIS 150. This is that first, the CCN8 one course, as it was mentioned earlier. This is that N plus course, if you will. Okay. But notice Cisco. So here's a great example of that descriptor being adapted for the Cisco Academy programs. All the core pieces are in it. There'd be no problem whatsoever. It was my pleasure, by the way. To, I, both of the reviewers had already said yes, no problem. So that when, when the course when the course came through, said, "Cool, great job, along with it. Okay. I only get to break ties as the chair. I don't get to do the actual evaluation, but I no, no time needs to be broken. Everything was in. Okay. okay, let's back up from here one more time. And then what I've left you with at the bottom and uh, it's some additional resources, and again, I'll leave this up on my website once I've cleaned up that page, um, is the actual presentation slides and a link to where I'm hoping um, sooner or rather later, I, I talked with Steve last night, he said I'd be, he'd be more than happy to um, actually click on the bottom link for me, would you please, Sandy? Mm -hmm. um, and this is the website for the uh, sector navigator for ICT and for the DSN, so it's kind of like a central resource place. And I'm hoping that uh, on one of these links up here within the next week or so, we're going to have the model curriculum and the uh, descriptors as well as some additional, some, some sample syllabi, some of course outlines posted right up there for you guys to see. It's, this is a great resource of all kinds of really good information. I'd like for you to, to check, check that out. So, We've seen some possibilities here for how we might be able to use the model curriculum and make it work. Now what I'd like to do is send us back to the presentation and I've got some other great examples um, that Sandy has for you and I'd like for you to talk about that. So as you're building the new curricula, what else might you be able to do with it? All right. So regional collaboration really works. Um, in my region, I have 15 colleges, and I'm up and down the road like crazy. 60-mile radius, right, but up and down trying to get everybody to work together. And recently, Samsung, we attended a meeting. As a result of our marketplace, Samsung developed a white paper. And they said in their white paper, we don't want to call it a help desk. We want to you know, raise it up to the next level called business service analyst. So they met with us at Mission College about two months ago. And he just happened to say, hey, we're moving our data center. I said, oh, data center, that means you need students. Can, can they come and help? Well, it was, we were all gone with all. They said, yeah, they can come. It was going to be the week of December 15th. And then I didn't hear anything. And so finally, I emailed the representative. I said, what happened with this? And he said, um, I said, I have the students lined up. They're ready to start. It was zero, you know, free volunteer, you know, roll up your sleeves and look great on your resume kind of deal. Well, it was a liability issue. So they said, well, you know, our legal department said when you have students come in and you make, make them move a box, that's technically working and you should pay them. Really? I said, at Alameda County, my students came with me for two years. I didn't have a budget to pay them, but I had a budget to feed them. So if 10 people came, we went to McDonald's. If five of them came, I took them to a white tablecloth establishment. So it really works. The partnership works. So Samsung rethought the idea and Richard was involved. He says, you know, we could partner and pilot our Ohlone students and, you know, get resumes coming in. So we decided as a region we would get other colleges like Hartnell and Los Medanos, DVC, uh, Berkeley City. You probably saw the email, some of you that are here. Um, I emailed the deans and I said, let, it, let us know we need students. So this internship opportunity came up. They interviewed um, 20, they went through 20 applications, um, applicants, and then seven were invited on December 29th to interview at Samsung. Very informal. It was very general questions, nothing really, really technical, but they wanted to see. So we turned those lemons into lemonade. Those applicants from five colleges in the Bay Area region submitted their resumes. Um, seven were chosen to interview. Unfortunately, one was a no-show. Um, he had a, a crisis at work, so he couldn't attend. So out of that, four were selected to come and intern, $12 an hour, 80 hours a month for four months. How cool is that to put that on your resume, internship at Samsung? So this is regional work. This is an example of it. 
Two of them were going to be on the IT side of the fence, which was the focus. Two were going to be on the security side of the fence. And so um, this was a great start. So internships that I've been working with are at Alameda County IT Department, Caltrans. Um, believe it or not, they have an IT center right in Oakland. Contra Costa IT Department. Not only do I knock on doors for the main data center, I said, well, you know, in, in the county, they have public works, they have health, they have social services, which was where I came from, child welfare. There's opportunities. Lawrence Berkeley National Labs has year-round internships, paid positions. They're like $14 an hour for desktop support. USF, University of San Francisco IT Department also has internships, as well as Yahoo. When I take my students on tours, every semester we go to an agency where they can, you know, parlay either desktop support or security. And so there are internship opportunities. So there's new grants coming down the pike. Department of Labor, there's ITC internship. You might have heard about it, $100 million. IDRC, the um, industry driven um, uh, partnering with uh, in infusing programming and soft skills. That was um, a pretty, pretty good chunk of money. And then there's also seed money to start a computer summer camp at your college. Georgia Tech, I attended um, a conference at the University of Santa Clara just a few weeks ago. They said, we have seed money to help your colleges. If you're interested, the deadline's January 23rd, get it in. But you can even go smaller scale, never just as DSNs. So here today we have Dennis Mole, our dear DSN Central Valley. We have Gustavo Tamora, LA region. We have Dan Watanabe, again, LA region. Um, Olivia was here earlier. We had Paula here earlier. We have Alan in, in the Empire. You know, use, utilize our um, funding because there are funds for this. Okay. And then if you want to learn more, I have a presentation at 3.30 on how to prepare your students for internship opportunities. And I'll tell you the do's and don'ts and the ins and outs and give you some really cool insight on that. And that's where I think the model curriculum, thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, can, can, can really shine, right? Because we've got a base foundation. Uh, now we can send students out to some of these opportunities. Uh, it's just, hey, this is easy. They come with these skills, these, these base skills, and they may have some additional focus, like on the Samsung side, but they want more security side. Yeah, we can offer that. But they come in with, with something in their hands, and if they can pick up a couple of certificates along the way. Yeah, if I could add that part of some <coughs> those uh, opportunities for internship were at representatives that were at our business and uh, industry leadership team meetings at the advisory team. Those two meetings we had in, in uh, April and, and uh, in October. So uh, and they were very supportive of the model curriculum. They figured that was the basic knowledge, IT knowledge, that these interns were coming in to learn more about the processes and procedures at those companies, and they would teach them that. Yeah, so uh, it was just a stamp of approval, I think, for, for this work, and uh, keeps us going. Yeah. Last but not least, here's where you, where you can participate. One, as I mentioned, there are three more descriptors that are going to be better here in the not too distant future. Um, I'd love for everyone in here to give that feedback. It's very straightforward. Go to the CID website. You'll get an email. Sense our, who got the email when the descriptors were approved? Who, who got that? Okay, so it's many of you. If you did not, make sure your deputy sector navigator knows because we're going to try to distribute it through that uh, avenue as well. Um, but there's a way for you guys to add in your five cents. Uh, if you like those descriptors, there's a little bit of, of, of uh, you know, modeling work, quote unquote, that we can still change. I would very strongly encourage you to participate in that. And I've got one more slide, and that is for those of you who may be interested in becoming a core reviewer. We at this point time have a ton more descriptors against which uh, people are going to be submitting their course outlines. If you are interested in becoming one of those uh, course outline of record evaluators, which is what course stands for, um, you can contact Christine at the Academic Senate, or you can contact me, and I'll put you in touch with, uh, with the right folks. There's a little bit of money involved, not much, um, but it's a great way for, you, for us to be able to look around what other people in the state are doing and kind of uh, work where, where things are at and how things are going. So it's a great way to stay on top. I hope you got something out of the presentation. I look forward to talking with you individually as, as, as you're interested. But uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so very much for coming.